7 Things I Never Knew About Python Until Recently Part 1 Frozen Sets So we know sets are essentially unordered collections that can only contain unique values. And if we check if a value exists inside a set, it will take a O1 time. So here, frozen sets are exactly the same as sets, except that they are immutable. So this is how we create a frozen set. So f is equals to frozen set. So let's pre-move of them. And this is how a frozen set looks like when it's printed. So once again, a frozen set is simply an immutable set, meaning that we cannot change it after we create it. So if we try to add something into the frozen set, we will just get an error. So frozen set has no attribute add. However, because of its immutability, we can use a frozen set as a dictionary key. And we can also add a frozen set into another set. For example, d is equals to dictionary. So d f is equals to let's say apple. And if we print d, we'll have a dictionary where the key is a frozen set. So this is only possible because a frozen set is immutable. So similarly, we can add a frozen set into a set. So s at f. And if we print s, our frozen set will be inside our set. Rounding numbers to x significant figures in f strings. So we know that using f strings, we can round a number to x decimal places. So let's say 3.14159 and colon dot to f. We'll be rounding this to two decimal places. And here we have 3.14. However, instead of decimal places, we can also round numbers to x significant figures if we want to. So we simply need to replace the f with a g. So here we have two significant figures. So let's test this with more numbers. A is equals to 3.14159. B is equals to 3.14159. And C is equals to 0 0.0003.14159. So let's round all of them to three significant figures. And let's see what we have. So 3.14, 3.14 E plus 0 0.05, and 0 0.0003.14. Infinity and negative infinity in Python. So let's first define infinity. So a is equals to float and inside we pass in a string called inf. So this will be infinity and b is equals to float minus inf. So this will be negative infinity. So let's print them both first and here we have them. So here infinity is larger than every other number while negative infinity is smaller than every other number. So here, if we print a is larger than, let's say, some random very large number, then to the power of 1000, we will still get true. And similarly, if we do the same to b, whether b is smaller than negative 10 to the power of 1000, it will also be true. Round and negative decimal places. So let's say we have some sort of number, 1234567189. So let's round this to two decimal places. And if we run this, we will get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0.68. So we get two decimal places. However, we can also round this to negative two decimal places, which means that it rounds to the nearest hundred. So if we run this, we will get 1, 2, 3, 0, 0. Similarly, if we increase this to negative three, we will round our number to the nearest thousand. And if we run it again, we will get 12000. Adding a list to itself. So let's say we have an existing list containing 1 and 2. And if we x append 3, we are actually adding 3 to the back of the list. So if we print x, we will get 1 to 3. So here we have it 1, 2, 3. However, what if we add the list to itself? So if we run this, we will get 1, 2. And we have this thing here. So this thing here is known as an ellipsis. And it's used by the print function to denote that there is some sort of cyclic reference inside the object. Private variables aren't really private. So we might have learned in object-oriented programming class that we can set certain private variables. However, here we can explore how we can see these private variables. So let's define a class doc. Define init self name h self underscore underscore name is equals to name and self double underscore h is equals to h so first let's create a dog object so dog is equals to dog 
Rocky and 4. So let's print dog and we are going to get this gibberish. Next, let's try to assess the dog name. So dog has no attribute name. However, this seemingly private variable is actually visible to us. So instead of calling name directly, we can use the ICT. So this magic variable enables us to see all of the attributes of our object. So let's run this. And we can see that dog name and dog age is actually there. So in Python, this is known as name wrangling. So if we add two underscores in front of our attribute, it will automatically be set in a format like this. So we can actually access this so-called private attributes. Dog, dog, name. And similarly, we can do that for h2. And we will still be able to see them. Printing stuff with color. So here, we first need to install this external library known as Colorama. Hit install Colorama. And let's wait for it to install. So next, let's import Colorama to ensure that we have it installed. And no error happens, which means that it's fine. So from Colorama, import 4. And we can print 4.read plus hello world. And this will print out red text. And here we have it, the red color text. We can try this with different colors too. And here we have it, colored text. Similarly, we can also have multiple colors in one line by adding the strings correctly. So print 4.red plus hello plus 4.blue plus world. And here we have it, hello is red and world is blue. So thanks for watching and I hope you have enjoyed this and hopefully you have learned at least one new thing about Python today.